Hi there, thank you so much for joining me today. This is Julie DiMatteo from thepaperpixie.com. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in the US. And in this video tutorial, I'm gonna share with you this quick and easy Daisy Garden gift box. This stamp set, Daisy Garden, is so awesome for quick and easy projects. I love the way that that background stamp looks. I've paired it with the Biggest Wish stamp set and heat embossed it in white, which is one of my absolutely favorite techniques, especially with a backdrop of a bold color. And this box is a really good size for putting in all kinds of things. The finished dimensions of the box are two and five eighths by four and a quarter by one inch deep. And it's just a really good size box for maybe a handful of treats. You could put in tissues and cough drops you could put in a silk scarf, maybe a men's tie, a really good size box for gifts. So let me show you how easy this is to make. In this version, we're gonna make a polished pink version of the box, and we're gonna start with a piece of polished pink cardstock that measures eight and a quarter by six and seven eighths. And along the eight and a quarter inch side, we're gonna score this at two and seven eighths, three and seven eighths, six and three quarters and seven and three quarters. Then I'm gonna rotate it clockwise and we're gonna score it at one inch, five and a quarter and six and a quarter. Next, I'm gonna fold and burnish on all the score lines. I'm gonna bring in a template here for reference with the two sections at the top and the one section at the bottom we're going to start at the bottom here and i've got a pair of paper snips we're just going to come in and cut up each of the vertical score lines stopping at that first horizontal score line next we're going to remove this lower right corner and i'm also going to come in and just angle cut slightly into that side section there and then I'm gonna fold these big sections out of our way to then come in and angle cut or miter these tabs. The bottom is ready to go. I'm gonna go ahead and flip the template and then flip the cardstock. Next, we're gonna cut up each of the vertical score lines but stop at the second horizontal score line. And then we're gonna remove these two sections here and then come in and angle cut as well. This tab is a little long, so we're gonna cut on that extra score line here. That will leave a one inch square. We're gonna leave this section alone, so I'm gonna fold that out of the way. Again, this tab needs to be shortened a bit, so I'm gonna cut right along that score line. And then we're gonna remove these two sections completely. I kind of like to flip the cardstock here, and then I'm cutting again on the second score line in, right along that score line to remove those two sections like so. Now we do have these two tabs. Let me turn it this way, fold this big section out of the way to isolate those tabs, come in and miter cut those. All right, now this is our top flap to close the box, but we wanna round those corners. I'm gonna bring in the detailed trio punch and I like to fold on the score line so I get this nice flat edge here and I can come in and easily round that corner. Same thing on the opposite side, fold that to get a nice flat edge and round the corners. Next, I'm using one of our retired punches. This is just a half inch circle punch. And I wanna put this finger notch here to make it easy for the recipient to open the box. So I'm just coming in about halfway between the edge and the score line. And I'm going in about a third of the way into the circle. And I've got that nice finger notch there, okay? The basics of the box are done. That was really easy. Let's go ahead and decorate it before we put it together. We're gonna to do a little bit of stamping here. So we've got the Daisy Garden stamp set, which I absolutely love, and the Biggest Wish stamp set. These are my two favorites from the current annual catalog. We're gonna stamp this in polished pink, and we're gonna stamp the thanks in Versamark ink, and then we're gonna heat emboss it in white. Bringing in my Stamparatus here, I've got this background stamp set up on the Stamparatus. 
I'm gonna ink that up with polished pink, and then I'm gonna take this piece. This is about a quarter sheet of basic white. We're gonna end up die cutting this with our stitched rectangle dies. So I just wanna make sure that I place this cardstock somewhere. I kind of put it in the, I'm putting it up to the top of the Stamparatus and about an inch in using that Stamparatus grid paper. And then I laid the stamp sort of in the center of that before I picked it up with the Stamparatus plate. The other thing I like to do is to put a stamp set underneath the plate here that gives me a better chance at inking up the stamp without making a mess. So I'm gonna ink this up with polished pink. Got great ink coverage there, and then we'll just go ahead and stamp that down. Putting even pressure on the stamp. Then we get a perfect stamped image. I love the impact of that. And next I'm gonna die cut this image using the fifth smallest or fourth largest, depending on which direction you look at it, of the stitched rectangle dies. And the funny part is I designed this box based on the size of this rectangle. That was my starting point. So I'm gonna kind of line this up to where I want to cut those daisies. And I've just got a couple of post-it notes that I'm gonna put down to hold that die in place. Bringing in the stamp and cut and emboss machine, and then I'm gonna put this at a slight angle. That's gonna have that rectangle die go through the stamp and cut and emboss machine smoothly. So run that through. And then we have that awesome stitched rectangle piece. Next, I have a piece of polished pink that measures one and a quarter inches by two and five eighths inches. We're gonna heat emboss this with white. I have my retired embossing buddy. That's just to get off any oil or static. Then I'm gonna ink the word thanks up from Biggest Wish in Versamark ink. And I'm gonna stamp that off to the right here like so. Then I'm going to sprinkle the white embossing powder over that. Then I'm gonna go ahead and heat emboss. Look at that perfect bold sentiment with the polished pink. I love that. All right, now bring back our box base here. I'm gonna go ahead and glue this panel down to the section that has this top tab. That's the front of our box. And I've got our sentiment panel. All right, now the box is ready to put together. I'm gonna to go ahead and flip it over. Then I'm gonna fold on the second score line from the left and apply glue to that little half inch tab. And I can fold on the first score line from the right. And those should line right up using our score lines to square up the box. Now keep in mind, this is the front of our box. We're gonna focus on the bottom here. I'm gonna tuck in those two tabs. I'm gonna put glue on each tab, and then glue on this front flap here. And then I like to sort of fold the tabs underneath so I have kind of a flat surface, just kind of closing them like that for now. I'm gonna fold in the back flap, then the front flap. And then because we use liquid glue, we can just square up that base. I like to flip it over and then using my bone folder, I can just come in and press from the inside, like so. Now we can go ahead and tuck in the tabs and then tuck in that top flap. And then we have our Daisy Garden gift box. Now it needs a little bit of bling. I'm gonna grab one of the larger jewels from the 2021 to 2023 in color jewels and place that on the outside for the finishing touch. All right, so let me bring in the three colorways we've made. And then on this week's live stream, I shared both of these cards. Those go really well with the gift box. And I just love the way that that looks. So thank you so much for joining me today. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel and hit that bell icon so you don't miss my next video. If you're interested in purchasing any of the Stampin' Up! products I use in today's video, they'll be linked in the description. And I'll also include a link to my detailed blog post with all project measurements, details, and a picture of the template. I'd love to have you come visit me at thepaperpixie.com where I post projects every weekday to inspire you. And if you don't want to miss a thing, you can subscribe to receive blog updates via email and you'll receive an email each time I publish a new post. You can shop with me anytime at thepaperpixie.com shop. And if you're interested in a discount on your Stampin' Up! purchases, the starter kit is the ultimate bundle, and it's a great way to fill your wish list for less. 
You can purchase the starter kit at thepaperpixie.com slash join, and I'd love to welcome you to my team of Paper Pixies and the Stampin' Up! family. If you don't already have a demonstrator and you'd like complimentary copies of our current catalogs, you can submit a catalog request at thepaperpixie.com slash happy mail. And if you give this project a try, I'd love to see what you made, so feel free to share it on social media with the hashtag paperpixie, and I'll be sure to check it out. Thanks again for watching. I hope you have a wonderful and blessed day. Take care. Bye.